Voices Live. It is Thursday, January 16th, 2020, already half January gone. Earning season starting to kick in, getting a number of big companies reporting. Things will really begin to pick up over the next couple of weeks as we get into the second tier, get into a lot of the big technology companies and then some of the second tier companies reporting. Uh, we'll have thousands of companies reporting earnings over the next few weeks. Uh, but let's take a look at what has been uh, going on. First, I'll give you my agenda for today, and then we'll get into the uh, daily market recap. But for, first, let's just go through things. We're going to start with that daily market recap. Uh, do a little talking technically. I'm a little nervous about the market right now, I'll be honest. Uh, there's a number of things that uh, have me a little bit nervous, so I want to talk just about a couple of those. Uh, we'll get into the earnings spotlight. As I mentioned, companies are starting to report, so we got a few companies like to go over there. Upgrades and downgrades, always like to go through, give you the latest, what firms are saying about these different companies. Uh, turning point, uh, that's just a segment where I take a look at companies that I think are getting to a point where uh, we could see a turning point. We need to get a breakout, breakdown, something, uh, but they're getting to a key level on their charts. And then we'll finish today with three, you must see, which is a interesting segment. I get a lot of positive feedback, just a uh, few charts that look really interesting to me for one reason or another, and I want to pass those along to you. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to start with the daily market recap. And I um, want to just show you, first of all, that this rally continues unabated. We did have our first close on the Dow Jones yesterday above 29,000, first time in history, 29,030. So it was up 90 points yesterday, up about three-tenths of 1%. The S&P 500 also managed to rally. It was kind of uh, flickering back and forth late in the day yesterday between, you know, it had been positive most of the day, came back down, looked like it was going to go negative, and then rallied into the close. Finished up six points for the day, almost two-tenths of 1% higher. The NASDAQ didn't perform as well on a relative basis, but it too did rally into the close, finishing with seven-point gain, which was about one-tenth of 1%. Small caps, though, actually led on a relative basis and broke back up above that December closing high near the 1025 area. We closed at 1027 and changed. So that was a good, good, uh, that was some good news for the market because I've been looking for small caps and transports, two areas to lead the market. We got the small caps participating yesterday. The 10-year uh, Treasury yield got a lot of economic news out this morning, some of it pretty good. And uh, we're getting a little bit of response to the upside. 10-year Treasury yield up a basis point to about 1.80% today. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail in just a second. The uh, utilities, XLU, leading group yesterday. Big breakout here above these prior highs. That's bullish. Uh, healthcare also strong yesterday, moving up. A little bit of a problem with the uh, uh, divergences there, though. You can see the PPO falling while prices keep going up. That could be a little bit of a problem for healthcare as we move into the second half of January, we'll see. But we are breaking out, had a good day yesterday. Consumer staples, haven't talked about staples leading the market much of late, but uh, they did yesterday and they broke out above that December high. To the downside, energy really struggling. We've seen crude oil prices drop from over $65 a barrel down to 57. And as a result, we've seen the XLE uh, come back as well. Still overall an uptrend though, higher highs, higher lows. I suspect we will be bouncing sooner rather than later in energy. Financials just been, been flat for a while. I think part of this, when you go back here and you look at the 10-year Treasury yield rolling over since about the third week of December, when the yield's moving lower, that tends to put a little bit of pressure on financials. The good news is they're really not going down. They're just sideways consolidating. The 10-year uh, Treasury yield, I want to talk a little bit more about this. Um, there were some economic reports out this morning, so let's go over those. First, initial jobless claims came out much better than expected, 204,000 versus 215,000 expected. The January Philadelphia Fed survey, well above expectations, came in 17 versus 3 expected. And then uh, December retail sales also came in. All these reports came out at 8.30 this morning, so about a half hour ago. December retail sales rose three-tenths of 1%. Market was expecting four tenths of 1%. So a slight miss there. But if we strip out the autos, December retail sales actually beat seven tenths of 1% uh, rise versus the five tenths of 1% expected. Later this morning at 10 a.m., we'll have November business inventories. The expectation there is they drop one tenth of 1%. And then January housing market index 
the estimate there is 75, and I believe it was the December housing market index came in at 76, way above expectations. I think the expectations were like around 70 or 71 maybe, uh, but there was a huge beat last month, I recall. And so the estimate for later this morning on the January housing market index is 75. All right, let's move on to earnings. So I've got a few companies I want to spotlight here. And I want to start with Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. Uh, they beat on their top line, beat on their bottom line. The stock is showing uh, in pre-market uh, possible open of about uh, a gain of maybe 1.7%. Beautiful move up. I mean, this is a stock that I think uh, Wall Street's been anticipating some good news. You can see overall, I think volume trends are pretty strong, nice uptrend. When you look at it relative to the semis, um, three, four weeks ago, we hit a 52-week relative high. Stock obviously has been performing well versus the S&P 500. So I would have expected good numbers to come out, and that's what we saw. We're getting a positive reaction, although if we don't, if we don't gap up to a new high or if we don't gap up above the prior candle bodies, it uh, could be a, a buy on rumor, sell on news type of situation. I wouldn't be surprised. A lot of the semis have struggled here over the past couple of days. So let's see if we can get the breakout here with TSM. But if we don't, or even if we do, even if we gap up, be aware of maybe something like a bull, or excuse me, a bearish engulfing candle, something along those lines. Be careful. Um, Morgan Stanley, but I do like the stock further out, by the way. TSM looks really good. Morgan Stanley, blowout report. This is probably going to stand out as one of the better reports of earnings season. $10.86 billion in revenues. The market was only expecting $9.72. So $1.1 billion beat in revenues. That's a big beat in revenues. Bottom line, a buck 20 versus 98 cents, not even close. Uh, once again, you can see Morgan Stanley has been moving higher. Look at the relative strength. It's right about that 52 week high heading into earnings. There's a reason why folks want to buy the stock heading into earnings because Wall Street's visited the company. They know that there's some good news coming. And we saw it this morning. The stock in pre market action up 6%. So we're looking at probably another three bucks or so on top of this. If you get some kind of a topping candle, a black candle, um, you know, maybe a doji, or maybe you, you gap up, rise during the day, and then come back and close below that open, maybe print a shooting star candle, something along those lines would indicate to me that maybe we'll get a pullback and an opportunity to get in a little bit cheaper. But this is a really strong report. I also wouldn't be surprised if it gaps up and just takes off. So I need to see how it reacts to its opening gap up. But Morgan Stanley, wow, what a great report here. BK also reported, nope, not Burger King, Bank of New York, Mellon Corp. Uh, been moving up, but when you look at it, not a great performer relative to the asset manager group. And the numbers that came in were mixed. I mean, we missed on the top line. We did beat on the bottom line by two cents, a buck one versus 99 cents. But the stock is down 6% pre-market action. So it does pay to watch this relative strength. Wall Street was not anticipating a great report. We got a mixed report, and now we're seeing a gap down uh, potentially at 6%. That would probably be about a $3 gap down. So we're talking about 47 and change way down in here. Uh, unless we get a big rally after that gap down, you want to be careful of a stock like this, especially, again, a stock that has been underperforming on a relative basis. We want leaders. We don't want laggards. PPG, this one was a little bit of a surprise to me. Um, I thought, you know, it's been trading up, and it's been trading up relative to its group. The problem with the stock is that its group has been horrible. Look at the group. This is specialty commodities. Look at the group relative to uh, the S&P 500. I mean, it has been trending down, down, down. And when you look at the absolute performance in the group, it's been sideways. And, of course, the stock market's been going straight up. So it's not been participating. So PPG is part of a very weak group, but it's been a leader. So it's always a question, you know, is, is the group going to bring the stock down or is the stock going to bring the group up? Well, we got our answer this morning. PPG, um, they were flat on their revenues. They missed on their bottom line. They guided quarter one earnings per share lower. They guided fiscal year 20 revenues and earnings per share lower. Stock down 4.4% today pre-market action, which would be probably about six, seven bucks. Um, so that's going to take it back down here to around the 123, 124 
area, I'm guessing, kind of doing quick math in my head here. Um, I would watch maybe these tops coming across here, 118 to 120. I would not want to lose that level. So if it goes down, hits that level and bounces, then perhaps maybe we'll just go into sideways consolidation here, perhaps till next quarter. Um, but don't like the reaction here and uh, don't like the group for sure. Last one I have here is WNS. This was actually a pretty good report. They beat on the top line, uh, beat on the bottom line, and it's been a pretty decent stock. You can see yesterday it closed near a 52-week high relative to its peers. Its peers are breaking out. The stock is moving up, closed at a new high yesterday. Uh, again, beat on the top line. Bottom line, $0.80 cents versus $0.74. Cents. And then they guided revenues and earnings per share higher on a forward-looking basis. Stock is up 3.6% pre-market action. So pretty good action uh, for the most part. Again, PPG a little weak. Um, Bank of New York Mellon, uh, not, not very good there. But otherwise, a really good report from Morgan Stanley and WNS. And TSM, not bad at all either. All right, let's move on. Let's head to the earnings, or excuse me, let's go toward the upgrades and downgrades now. And I'm going to start with a company that has been upgraded this morning. And they just reported earnings, I believe, in IHS market, ticker symbol info, INFO. Um, I actually like the stock. I mean, when you look at it, breaking out to new 52-week highs relative to its peers. Uh, once again, the group pretty strong, nice volume trends on the breakout. Being upgraded, I agree with the upgrade, but it's just stretched. Um, I would like to see the stock on the 20-day test. Uh, the low just a couple of days ago came down to about 77 bucks. Your 20-day is at 76.64. So that's an area that I would certainly be watching to the downside. Let's take a look at another upgrade, IRBT, iRobot Corp. Uh, upgraded, it's been in a really lengthy downtrend. Stock relative to its peers, been in the doldrums. I, I'm not really liking this. I think we still got some work here. In fact, I'd be very skeptical. I'm gonna annotate this chart. I'd be very skeptical if we get an, uh, a gap higher today and then fail. Um, there's your gap resistance. See the huge volume gap down here? We just went up and tested that yesterday and then came back down below it. If we gap up and we don't hold it and come back down with maybe some sort of a dark cloud cover candle or bearish engulfing candle, something like that, um, I would be highly skeptical of this move to the upside. You can see multiple gaps to the downside. I can count four pretty good sized ones. One, two, three, and then four. Um, they say on Wall Street, one of my favorite Wall Street adages is there's never just one cockroach in the kitchen. In this case, we've already seen four. Um, I don't know about this upgrade. I, I need to see more before I'd be interested in this, in this particular chart. So iRobot for me is a pass right now. MHK also upgraded today. Let's take a look at the chart here. I think this chart might be starting to look a little bit better. Yep. Three white soldiers right there. I've, I saw that earlier. Now, overall, longer term. It's been in the doldrums, but we do have this move back to the upside. Three uh, very strong candles, pretty much opening on the low, closing on the high. That's a pretty good sign of accumulation. Now, it has been sideways consolidated. I don't know that this thing will just completely take off, may uh, pull back. But if it did, I think that 20-day that moving average is starting to turn up. That might be an interesting area for entry. So. I think uh, MHK looks uh, pretty interesting at this point. I love what it's done here over the past few days. And it did gap up on big volume. It went back just a little bit below this gap support and then has made this big move since. All right, let's keep moving here. How about Synaptics, S-Y-N-A, another upgrade today. This one I do like. Uh, just three or four weeks ago, Synaptics put in a new relative high to the computer hardware uh, industry group. Look at the volume. Every time we've had any kind of volume, it's been accompanying these, this push to the upside. So I think the upgrade is good. I still, uh, once again, I like to buy a stock on a test of support, either price support, moving average support, something. So I don't know that I want to chase it, but 20-day test has been pretty good entry on the, in this stock the past uh, couple of months. So that's what I'd look for going forward. Downgrades, DDD was downgraded. This is 3D Systems. Uh, I think it's maybe a valuation call. The stock has been moving up. I remember it was probably a week ago. 
I put this in my daily market report to members. I saw the volume come in here, saw the stock come back up and challenge this overhead resistance area. Well, it has since continued higher. It's moved up quite a bit. It's being downgraded. I think that this is a stock that looks to me like it's going to go higher. Um, we're getting very close to moving to about a five or six month relative high versus the computer hardware space. Volume is coming in. I think uh, any kind of a pullback as a result of a downgrade, especially if it were to get back close to this 1070 area where it gapped up to here, I think the top of this gap support could offer up some very, very nice support for 3D systems. Another downgrade, Maxim, M-X-I-M. This is Maxim Integrated Products. Uh, you notice the stock, it's really not been bad. It's sideways consolidating. You might look at it and say, this isn't too bad until you realize it's part of the semiconductor group, which has been on fire, breaking out the new highs. And then you look at Maxim relative to the semis and realize there's a lot of other semis that are probably doing a lot better and that are doing a lot better. So this one's being downgraded. It's not one that I would be interested in anyway. It went back up here and tested the top of this gap resistance. Look at the huge volume back in July, August. I'm assuming that was earnings related. We have not been able to get through that. Until we can get above 63 on a close, I wouldn't be interested in this stock. And even then, I would want to see relative strength starting to pick up. All right, let's see. Let's try Tesla. Interesting. Had an event yesterday talking to Earnings Beats members and uh, just had an impromptu webinar because a lot of warning signs that I've seen in the market. And um, I, uh, I, I just feel like, um, you know, there's some things that, we need to recognize market's been going straight up. Look at Tesla's chart. I mean, this thing has been going straight up. But if you pay any attention at all to options, you'll know that when a stock goes up like this on this kind of volume, there is a ton of in-the-money call premium on a stock like this. And so I was looking at Tesla, and this was one of the individual stocks that I just thought, I bet they have a max pain number that's much lower than the current price. And sure enough, yesterday, Tesla started uh, reversing back down. Today, it gets downgraded. The stock was down in pre-market. I don't know where the stock goes, but when you get a stock that's going straight up like this, heading into its earnings report or into uh, options expiration, you got to be really careful. Sometimes the carpet just kind of gets pulled out from under you. I wouldn't be surprised to see Tesla down a little bit more. So that downgrade, uh, I would uh, agree with. Um. One more I want to do is uh, Xilinx. And Xilinx is one that I think is, um, I'm going to show you a weekly chart. You know, you look at the, the daily chart and it's in the semi space and it hasn't been doing well on a relative basis, but I don't want to lose sight of how much this stock went up in the fourth quarter of 2018. Remember when the market was dropping like a rock? Xilinx was going up through all of that and into the first quarter and even part of the second quarter, Xilinx was soaring. And so it's pulled back, but I think maybe the price just got way ahead of itself. And this is a stock that I actually think could be a little bit of a sleeper. Um, it's being downgraded today. I want to see how it reacts to this downgrade. If it, down, if it gaps down into the low to mid 90s or something and then rallies back with another hollow candle, that's going to probably tell me that a lot of the sellers are gone in this stock. So I'd watch Xilinx very carefully today. All right, uh, next mm, segment I want to talk about is Turning Point. So I'm going to move over to Turning Point. And I mentioned at the top of the show, Turning Point is a segment that um, is where I, I'm looking for stocks that are nearing key levels or uh, trying to make breakouts, maybe not quite breaking out or getting close, but not yet giving us that signal, that uh, full speed ahead signal with a breakout. And I think when you look at some uh, uh, stock like automatic data processing, ADP, I think this kind of uh, you know, really illustrates what I look for. So we have a top here back in September of about 172 and a half, 173. We go down. Now, I could have had this on turning point hitting support multiple times as well. I'm going to give you two lines here. So there was the high. And then look at these lows down here. Now, you break out above these prior highs, you come back down, there's a turning point, it turns back up. Comes back down, hits this turning point, turns back up, goes to a new high, and you can see new highs being established here up in the upper 160s, low 170s, and then notice we come back down, look at that hammer print. 
right on that test of support again. That was the lowest the stock saw over the past three to four months. So when you get up here, now this is an, uh, an inverted hammer or a shooting star candle where you gap up, you looks like you're breaking out, and then you come back down and close back at or near that support level. I want to see what ADP does today. This is a turning point for me. This could be a, an area where ADP starts another push to the downside. Now, I'm very bullish the overall market, so I'm not somebody that would want to short anything in the market, but it is worth noting, you know, I get a lot of questions, when do I sell a stock? Well, when I see a stock move up like this, fail to make the breakout and come back down, I'm not saying it can't go higher, it's in an uptrend, it's above its 20 day, maybe it just goes right back up there, but that's a little bit of a warning to me. It had good volume, looked like it was breaking out, and then it comes back down. Um, so anyway, wanted to mention that as a possible turning point. Uh, let's look at FAST. Now, I'm, uh, this one, Fastenal, is a stock that's going to be reporting earnings. Um, I don't, yeah, I'm pretty sure they haven't reported yet. But the last time they reported earnings in early October, you can see what happened. Stock made this huge move. Now, we've set our, our kind of our line in the sand to the upside near $38. We've got our line in the sand here at the bottom at $34, sideways consolidating. I could almost call this equal highs and rising lows. So this is a stock that I think with earnings, we could definitely see a turning point, either a breakout or a breakdown of this pattern. Watch 34 to the downside, watch 38 to the upside. A gap up above 38, a gap down below 34, and that could absolutely be a turning point for this stock. All right, next up, how about Intuit? Um, Intuit, I-N-T-U, downtrending for a while. Looks like it's starting to, to move an up, uptrend. Now, you know, when you see a stock that's moving down or sideways consolidating, see how the moving averages really don't do anything. You go up above them, you come back down below, you go up above, come down below, go back above, come back down below, go above. Well, this time we held and we went to a new high. So that's starting to tell me that maybe we're trending higher here. Also, look overhead here. Off of the big move down in September, the reaction highs have come up here to about 275, and we failed. We got just above that level earlier this week, and now we're coming back down. I think this is a turning point. Do we continue this trend on into it and move back to these new highs, or do we break down below the 20 and the 50 like we were before? And that would be more of an indication that we're trendless. So I would be watching the 20 day to the downside and then maybe that 276, 277 area to the upside. That will give us a signal maybe about a turning point here on into it. Mercado Libre, M-E-L-I. High in August, right up to 700. Where did we go earlier this week? Right up to 700. Pulling back, we got a stock that's trending higher, trying to hold this 20 day moving average. I think we're at a turning point. The 20-day needs to hold his support, and we need to break this uh, move uh, or this top above 700. It looks to me like an uptrend followed by a cup and a handle coming in here. So M-E-L-I, another one at a turning point. Last one I have is uh, Paychex, P-A-Y-X. Uh, Paychex, another one right up here, trying to make this breakout. I'm going to say 87 to about 87 and a half. Uh, you can see here, got up. It looked like we were making the breakout just a few weeks ago failed that led to more sideways consolidation here we come again volume picking up this is a pretty good sign can we get that move above 88 if we can to me it's a turning point we move from sideways consolidation to potentially a breakout and this is another one that you could be looking at is an uptrend followed by a cup right here's the end of the cup we handle back to the moving averages and now turning higher a breakout above 88, by the way, would measure up about $10 to 98. So pretty interesting uh, turning point stocks. I think I probably um, messed up Rachel earlier, my producer, because I skipped over the talking uh, or talking technically, and I apologize for that. Um, so if you saw a screen and I didn't do talking technically, that was my bad. Just wanted to point that out. Um, and in fact, what I would do, maybe um, let's go ahead and, and go into the three you must see. Uh, but I do want to just say that under talking technically, I just wanted to point out that um, 
I just wanted to point out that the S&P 500, we've got a negative divergence on the daily and hourly chart. If you look at the sector leaderboard, and I'll do that and I'll come right back to this chart. Um, this is the first of the three you must see, but I just wanna show you on the sector leaderboard. Remember at the top of the show, I was telling you that um, defensive groups were leading utilities, healthcare, consumer staples led yesterday by a pretty good margin. Look at the one week. Utilities, real estate, consumer staples, top three over the last week. This is what's been leading the rally of late. If you go back throughout the entire rally over the last three months, you'll see it's the aggressive groups. But the last week, it's been defensive groups. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out because I think that's really important. And if we go higher today, you want to make sure you watch to see what's leading the market. Um, also, historically, October 27th close to January 18th is the strongest period of the year. Tomorrow is January 17th. Of course, the 18th is Saturday. So tomorrow ends the strongest period. October 27th close to January 18th close on the S&P 500 since 1950 has an annualized return of 20.76%, more than double the average annual return throughout the year of 9%. So just want to point that out. That these are some of the warning signs, things that we need to be at least conscious of. All right, Nectar Therapeutics, first of the three you must see. Just wanted to point out the huge scooter move in this stock from just a couple of days ago, went from below 10 to 70, and then right back down below 10 again um, with one move down. And for those of you not familiar with how the scooter score works, it's based on, I've got the 200-day moving average here. It's based on the relationship of the price above the 200 or below the 200. Notice how we went above and now we've come right back down below. So that's 30% of the calculation. Another 30% of the calculation is the rate of change uh, using the 125 day rate of change. Notice how we were really improving, getting better and better. We were almost back to the zero line and then quickly turned right back down again because of that uh, move yesterday. And then 15% of the move or 15% of the calculation for the scooter is how much above or below you are the 50 day EMA. So here you can see the 50, actually that's a 20, the 50 actually should be a little bit higher, but we went above the 50 and then we came back down below the 50. Um, and same goes for the 20 day rate of change. That's also 15% of the calculation. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out. I actually sent this out to members yesterday. I think the stock's coming back down to a key support level, 20 day price support. This is where it needs to hold. The next stock that I had for you for the three you must see is... Uh, XON. And XON, I just wanted to point out, look at that bearish engulfing candle. Here we had a dark cloud cover back down. Here we had bearish engulfing back down. Here we had bearish engulfing, went back up, had a failure, and then back down. But when I see a reversing candle like this, this is another reason for me to sell. If I hadn't already sold, I don't like it when a stock comes up and makes a a big move like this on an uptrend and prints a bearish engulfing candle. And then the last thing I want to point out, the five-day moving average of the equity-only put-call ratio is at a four-year low. When everybody is buying calls like they did at the be beginning of 2018, many times you'll see the S&P 500 drop after that. Folks, we've been going straight up. Everybody is jumping in on the long side right now. We want to be really, really careful on the S&P. All right, uh, that is what I had for today. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, check us out over at Earnings Beats. Go to earningsbeats.com and sign up for a $7 trial. Love to have you. Everybody have a great day. Happy trading.